hello and welcome back to the channel before we even start today's video i wanted to say get involved in the comments if you're into your woodwork joinery building skills tradesmen whatever get involved and give me any tips or ideas that you've got for the garage build the beginning of this video is not going to look like this so this is a little sneak peek teaser we're out we're building the garage the project has fully begun i wanted to say before we get into today's video we've got two new caps online national black and gray cap and a national pink full pink out cap so go and check them out don't forget you get a free cap with every single order on owner right now whenever you're getting your hoodie your t-shirt your wallet your stickers whatever add it in every order it's free thanks for the support let's go welcome back to the channel welcome back to the channel today we are starting the garage project it's gonna be insane i am very excited i don't look that excited but i am really excited basically because it's such a big build because the garage is such a crazy project i'm kind of half stressed about it so i'm kind of stressed and i'm kind of worried but i'm also excited so if i don't seem as excited as i want to be about my garage i am super excited but it's not like i'm unboxing a new bike i'm like oh my god my new bike i'm like oh my god i'm getting a sick garage but i've got to build it it's a big one so basically it's going down right now i am on the way to tool station and i'm getting an impact driver right so i am home i know my cameras are kind of a bit wonky right now but i'm home and basically i got a dewalt impact driver and a cordless drill driver i went there to buy a cordless impact driver body only which was 130 pounds and a 4 ah battery which is the only battery they had in stock as a single unit that came to 200 pounds but then i realized that you didn't actually get a charger with the battery which is kind of weird so basically i've bought a set instead for 200 199 pounds which is pretty sick you get Two batteries, which is, they're only little 2AH batteries, but you get a drill driver and an impact driver. This was all under £200, and you actually got a third battery. So I got three little mini batteries. Um, I got a charger, which you didn't get in the other set that I was going to buy. And obviously, the impact driver body. 18 volt XR brushless. I reckon that's pretty sick to be honest and the way i looked at it i kind of thought originally i was gonna get a body only impact driver and a 4 ah battery and a charger would have cost me about 260 pound now i've spent 200 pound and if i now go and buy myself a big battery i've got three little batteries an extra drill driver and still what i was gonna buy so happy days so there we go this is for building me timber frame around the garage. I also bought, whilst I was out, a new blade for me miter saw. Now, one thing I wanted to say about the miter saw is, in an ideal world, I would use a crazy miter saw. Maybe like a pretty crazy one with a slide, double bevel, all that stuff. Because I've only got like a bit of a cheapo miter saw, which was like 60 quid from B&Q. But... The reality is, is it cuts 4x2 absolutely fine. So I've got a fresh blade for it and basically I can now cut my 4x2 frame. If I run into any issues or problems, I'll probably upgrade my miter saw or even rent one or hire a really good one. But I'm just going to try it and see how far I get. The blade is only like 20 odd quid. So I've got a fresh blade, it cuts 4x2 timbers at up to 45 degrees in an angle which I'm not going to need. So yeah, let's just see how... It ends up turning out. I'm pretty excited and let's get on with the build. I'm going to start with the walls. I'm going to switch to some time lapses and we're going to see how long it takes to throw the walls up. Let's do this. So the build has officially begun. I'm working on the outside wall down here. And basically there's a couple of little tech bits that I've got to work out because the way I'm running it, do you know what? I'm going to flip the camera around. I'm just going to show you what I'm on about. Check it out. At the front, I'm bracing my shutter on a 6x6 post right in the corner here. So I've got a 150mm slab of 6x2 on the very edge of this slab, as you can see. So that's kind of giving me my depth that this outside wall needs to start at. Now, I've 
I've got tape measure starting obviously wherever wherever I want it at. I've got tape measure all the way along here. Obviously this is going to be going this way, but for now I'm just measuring the length of this wall. And basically underneath this, this screen, is the timber. This is to come out still, giving us a nice sharp edge on the concrete base. But what I'm actually going to be doing here on this outside wall is 18mm OSB board, then a batten, and then I want the cladding to run off the slab keeping it super dry. So what I'm working out is how thick that's going to be. I'm actually using some super thin concrete cladding. It's like composite and it's only 8mm thick so that's so minimal that it's going to be not even included. And then the bottom piece I'm going to run straight off so it's super sealed and tight. Basically my battens are... oh dear, it just moved. Nah, it doesn't matter because I've got my mark there as you can see. But my battens are 28mm which is about here and then the OSB board is 18mm which is about here and then my 4x2 will be like 100mm deep or whatever. So all I'm, all I'm working out right now is this wall down this side, <coughs> just the length so I can begin to build one of the walls on the ground. But basically I've figured out my depth which is that, so now I'm going to get a measurement of that all the way down there and then we're done. So it's a fresh day, day two on the garage build. I'm doing one of the walls right now which is kind of hard because it's such a long length of timber to get it straight ideally i would have been able to buy like massive meterage timbers and then it'd have been pretty easy to put a drop on it just at one end and the other end but because i've joined a couple of timbers together to make the overall length of the wall it's kind of made it a tiny bit harder but nothing that's too crazy i'm kind of getting somewhere with it now anyway so i'm going to spin the camera around i'm going to show you where am I with one of the garage walls? Check it out. Any suggestions, tips, ideas, let me know in the comments below and we'll get started on the garage build walls. If you have a look from here, you'll see that basically it's 2.5-ish there, including the timber on top, so it's about 2.2 there. Room for the joist and the wall's gonna be, I'm gonna swap out this front timber for the 6x6 post that's going to hold the shutter so for now that is pretty much a temporary timber um so all the way down there as you can see looks pretty chilled i've put my first couple of uprights in i've got a mark to every 400 there's one there's my next one there's my next one there's my next one and all the way along so they're marked all the way along every 400 and we are getting somewhere observing me, the health and safety officers in the sun getting a bit of vitamin D aren't you Frenchies? So yeah, as you can see anyway I've got a lot more uprights to put in so I'll do a little time lapse putting all them uprights in and then I've got to replicate that wall again and then I've got to build the back wall and then the joists on top so before you know it this will probably be coming along so yeah before you know it, it'll probably be coming along and looking somewhat like a garage wall. But at the moment, it's just like teething problems, trying to get the wall as straight as I can get it with long length timbers and stuff. So bear with me, it'll be done soon enough. I'm enjoying it. I'm hoping today I can get at least the two side walls done and braced at every 400. Then maybe tomorrow if I could do the back wall and the joists on top maybe. We'll see. Stay tuned. See you shortly. Okay, basically one wall is fully finished, as you can see. Well, there's a lot more to go in, like triangles, so on, so on. But pretty much there, it's kind of finished. The upright timbers all the way along and my full length is done. So, at a later date, this timber on the very end is coming out and I'm gonna be putting an oak beam in at two meters high. Check out this picture. Basically the front's gonna look something like that. So, now I'm gonna build the exact same wall again on top of that for this side.
Okay, it is about 6 p.m. Maybe later, let me check. Been on it a full day today. 10 past six. I'm working on the back wall, which is now the third frame high here. I'll go down in a second, show you. Um, I've still got to put like little damp proof membranes at the bottom of every timber frame to stop rise and water. Even though the whole thing will be off the edge of the concrete, so we shouldn't have that issue. I'm just doing it as a backup and precautionary and wrapping the underneath of the timbers in damp proof, um, like little damp proof membrane things. And I've got to put noggins and triangles in, so a noggin on every single one of these. And then I've got to put triangles in as well, so in every corner. Really give it some stability and strength. Walls are pretty strong like this, but they're nowhere near as strong as what they should be without noggins and stuff like that. But I have actually just run out of wood, so I've got to get wood tomorrow. I only need like one, two, three, four, five, six, 2.4 meter lengths of four by two. So I'm gonna try and get them in the golf, maybe for this video and then finish the walls, stand the walls up and see what we're working with. But I'm gonna spin the camera around. I'm gonna show you what I've done today. Okay, check it out. Basically, we've got three frames. The bottom two are the walls, and this one is the back, obviously being shorter. I've obviously just run out of timbers here for me, um, me upstands, me uprights. So, it is officially day three, I think. Yeah, day three on the build. I mean, walls are all done, pretty much. Come and check it out. So, me two big long walls are on the bottom. They are actually the same length. I've just pulled one forward while I've been working on it. This is my rear wall. This one's going right at the actual back of the garage. We've got the Frenchies out here. We've got Quattro over here. And we've got Dixie. The Frenchies are little escape artists. They literally run out the street and go. They'll never probably come back, so they're tied up. So this is my back wall, which I've began putting noggins in for stability that way. And then I'll put them all in the side walls and then we'll load the joists, which is them bad boys over there. Beasts. Um, I'm putting my damp proof membrane on the bottom. Even though I shouldn't need that because both concrete bases are damp proofed underneath them. And the wood, the battens and the cladding are off the edge of the concrete slab. And then my cladding's going to close the slab and go down the side. So I shouldn't need these, but we're going to put them on anyway. So I'm halfway through stapling them with. So, I don't know whether you remember this thing. This has made it onto the channel before. It's an 18 gauge nail or staple gun. I'm basically just stapling this on right now, on the sides, and then I've got to flip it over and staple it on that side so that it covers the sides and so on. I'm also then going to lay an extra one down on the ground all the way round for it to seat on. Kind of a double protection, staple it up and then put the walls in place, screw them together, joists on. We're getting quite close. Then we're gonna king spam, composite cladding, boards on the inside or plasterboard, I'm not 100% sure yet what's going on the inside and then maybe even some Rockwell insulation after the king spam. It's for like noise. So we have the king spam for sort of weatherproofing it. Then we have Rockwell for the noise, so it's nice and solid. It's gonna be sick. Now, started putting these little noggins in. That's what they're called, noggins. I started putting noggins in on there. Um, it's quite a big one. So I'm gonna do that, maybe stand it up, noggin the next one, stand it up, noggin the next one. Although you won't want it to fall on you while you're noggin and one. Noggin on your noggin. I think that's it. I think that's it. I think that's it. I don't know whether I said this at the beginning of the video as well, but we've got new national hats online right now and you get it free with your order. So if you're ordering anything from a wallet or stickers all the way to a coat, a jacket, you get a free snapback cap with every single order. So make sure you add it to your basket. Check it out. Basically, I'm on the way to Tool Station to get a damp proof course. 
I was gonna use like strips of a damp proof course, but I've come short on a spare roll. So it's made me kind of want a wider one as well. So that one that was in the last clip was like a 150, I think, on the, on the bottom of the timber. So it kind of didn't wrap up as much as I would want it to wrap up the sides. So I've gone to buy a 300, which should give me some pretty good clearance up the front and up the back of the timber. Also, the damp proof course is better than like visqueen. I was gonna use like a visqueen sheet. If you know what that is, it's basically like a massive sheet for like inside a concrete base. Hence why I've got it spare from my concrete slab DIY job, which has turned out pretty sick, I must say so myself. Now, basically, I was going to put visqueen down under it and then cut it to size, but damp proof courses are actually, they're like a little bit I think they're a bit more like hard wearing because they sit in between bricks and blocks to like stop rise and damping brick walls. So I think they're like a bit more like a plastic, like thick plastic. So I'm going to use that just for like the extra stability and strength in it and stuff. Uh, so I'm on the way to get a 300 one of them. I'm going to go home now. I'm going to staple all the damp proof courses on it. And then for the next video that you tune in to watch, because you will, because you're excited for the garage build, obviously. I'm going to be standing the walls up and fingers crossed putting the joists on but maybe I'll stand the walls up, staple all the damp proof membranes and put the joists on maybe in that same video. I'll hopefully by this weekend have something that looks like a garage and then it's all boards, um, board, roof boards, rubber on the roof, um, insulation, all kinds of stuff. I found out today that I'm getting my roller shutter on about the 13th of March if I'm lucky and if I'm unlucky the 29th of March so I'm hoping I can have the whole thing done ready for the shutter finish the front wall when the shutter comes and yeah it's looking good I've already spoke to the electrician we're gonna spotlight it front to back and we're gonna board the roof paint it black spotlights in it it's gonna be pretty savage I hope you guys are excited for the future of the content car content bike content and more make sure you go and check out owner we've got new national caps online and you're getting free with every single order just add your cap to your basket and enjoy we've also got um, all the sizes back in the X Storm jackets which are the big pullover jackets they're pretty sick and we've got two new long sleeve t-shirts and a couple of new hoodies from about two weeks ago so we've got a few new bits that some of you may not have seen and None of you will have seen the caps yet, so go and check it out. Thanks for the support. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Shout out the garage. Shout out. Peace out.